everybody how's it going this is carolis thank you for checking out the channel this is where you get all your information for business analysis for you to start and grow your career as a business analyst and if you're watching the video thank you so much please like and subscribe if you are listening to this on the podcast thank you again for listening to this and for those of you that don't know i do have a podcast now you can find it on uh, Spotify, on Google Podcasts, on Pocket Casts, on Radio Public, and just about wherever you get your podcasts from. Just go there and look for Real World Business Analysis with Carolise. That's the name of it, Real World Business Analysis with Carolise. And there you'll get a lot of the information you also get on YouTube, but I try to make the content a little bit different on the podcast. So Go check that out if you haven't done so already. All right, so today we're talking about the top software tools for business analysts, product, and project team. It's gonna be great, don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Okay, so the first set of tools I want to talk about is your workflow diagrams tools. So the main ones that are really the most popular right now are Lucidchart and Visio. So I don't have an example of Visio right now. The other video I've done on software tools that business analysts should know, I went into some examples of that. So you can go check out that video to walk you through that i'll just talk a little bit now about lucid chart so lucid chart is one of those tools that's online it's very useful i you know i've seen it being used for many different things there's so many templates in here so it gets you started really quickly they also have a lucid board and they have other lucid products but the lucid chart is a typical one that you tend to use as a business analyst you can create your flow charts in here. You can create your diagrams in here. It's very useful. I've used it to embed uh, diagrams into Confluence. We'll talk about Confluence in a minute. But it's a very useful tool. And the fact that it's online, you can have live updates of your charts if you embed it somewhere else. So you don't have to duplicate or screenshot and paste it somewhere else. Very, very um, useful. Lots of templates. Uh, it's worth it. So Lucidchart is one of those very, very good tools that I think is definitely worth it. And you can do almost all of your diagrams in Lucidchart. All right. The next tool is Visio. So I don't have an example of Visio to show you guys, but Visio is one of those kind of legacy tools that's very helpful as well as a part of the Microsoft suite. I think you have to pay for it separately, but it's available from Microsoft. It really does help you to create those flow charts. It's an enterprise level tool that is just more, um, ingrained into big organizations smaller companies might be more agile and willing to do lucid chart whereas the bigger companies are tending to use the microsoft suite of products including visio next is your mockups and prototype tools so for mockup and prototype um there's quite a few out there uh, i've used a lot of them <laughs> but i'll tell you that the ones i really like are balsamic so Balsamic is more of a wireframing tool. It's just really easy to get started. It has lots of pre-built um, buttons and screens and just things that just drag and drop. So it's very easy to get started. I also like Envision. Envision is more of a UX kind of tool. It's a little bit more professional. And what it does is it lets you, if you have the images, it lets you create like um, heat areas, like um, hot spots and you can create or simulate a click-through um, walkthrough of your, your solution or your software using the screens and simulate how the users will walk through the features that you're coming up with. So it's very useful for that, but it does depend on you having those screens done already somewhere else. So you'd have to have it done in, I don't know, Photoshop or Zeppelin or Figma or whatever you're using for your UX designing. And then you go to InVision to, to see how it works. So that's the only drawback I find with InVision. Marvel app is kind of the same way. It's another kind of, you know, prototyping tool, 
that really does help you to model a walkthrough of a of, you know of, of a functionality that you want what i like about it is that it already has all of these pre-built uh screens in there so it's kind of the same like balsamic a little bit more elegant i would say uh you can add your pictures if you want or you can use the marvel app itself to build out that flow it's been a, a very useful app i've used it in the past and it's been very helpful in getting the team all aligned as to what we're trying to build so i like it i like it a little bit more than balsamic to be honest but i think it still has some work to go now the number one tool i think for prototyping and mock-up is azure rp uh, Axure. I, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Axure, Axure. <laughs> Most people call it Axure. There's Axshare, S-H-A-R-E, and there's Axure. Uh, I'm going to go ahead with Axure right now. <laughs> Axure RP is a great tool. It is so realistic. Oh my goodness, I cannot stop um, talking about it. With this tool, you literally can put the images that you've created and you can create these hotspots you can put like a text box and let the user simulate entering data you can put logic behind it like if this happens then that you can put conditions you can mimic almost anything your application wants to do without building the application i mean it's so real world it's so lifelike it's so good you don't even know you're interacting with an actual mock-up or a prototype you think you're actually in the application it's really really good for that um all of these tools are paid there is a free version for Marvel app. I think you can have like one or two projects for free. Envision has its free versions too, but I would say um, you're really not getting the full use of the software for most of them without having paying for it. I mean, a Marvel app, you can have a whole project and do everything, but it's only one project, right? So if you're looking to do your work sample, uh, you could look at any one of these prototyping tools that would really help you um, and take advantage of the free offer that they have. But if you really want to just really do it well, you might as well take a trial or um, pay for it. Some of these things are worth paying for, you know. So that's your mock-up tool. I really, really encourage you to look at Actual RP. It is just so good. I, I cannot stop talking how impressed I am with it. Balsamic is very easy to use. Envision is easy to use. And Marvel app is also easy to use. All right. So let's look at... Requirements documentation. So requirements are not documented in the same structured way that user stories are. Um, there isn't really a tool that's like, this is the tool to use. You can just document it wherever it makes sense. So a lot of companies are just using regular Microsoft products to document their requirements. They're using Word. Some people are using PowerPoint, which is a little odd, but they do. <laughs> um, they're using whatever is out there. There's Google Docs as well. People just create Google Docs for it and they collaborate on it. That's how they capture their requirements. They're using Excel. That's how they capture their requirements. There isn't really a structured standard thing. Whatever you can use that is like a, just a text editing software is enough. I will say that if you have Jira, um, Confluence from Atlation is pretty common too to be used for documenting requirements. It's just that it's not, typically it's not documented as a requirement. You know what I mean? It's typically documented as just anecdotal information about the user story. So there are people are using Jira for user story documentation. We're gonna talk about that too in a minute. Confluence can be used for documenting your requirements, but typically if you have Jira, you're in an agile environment. And so there is a little less need to have comprehensive, you know, brd style documentation the way we're used to in waterfall so people are using conference to document maybe use cases document decisions that were made document you know like retrospectives they use conference for all of that but it could be used as a requirements documentation tool but that's not the main purpose and many companies are not using it for that particular purpose but it's there just wanted to let you know that Time management. So your time management tools are many and varied. <laughs> Since I did my last um, video on software tools, there's just been so many tools that come and go and people just have their own preference. There's so much to choose from. You ever hear the saying, there's an app for that? Well, there's a tool for that, right? So <laughs> there's just so much going on there. Now, there are a couple of enterprise level tools 
And a lot of the time management sometimes is captured within the other tools that people are using for something else. For example, with Jira, you can have time management where you can capture how long it's taking you know, developers to work on a ticket, or you can capture the time management from there. So it's like, it's like a field level functionality as opposed to its own software. Although I know there are time management softwares that dedicated to that out, out there. I would say the ones I've been using a lot are more newer, like they're just, you know, web applications that I found useful. And that is Clockify and My Hours. So Clockify is one that you can just start tracking how long you're working on a project. And the same thing with My Hours. Um, I personally have a, have a pet peeve about time management. Like I don't like people watching my time. I like to deliver value. And I, I think people should be rewarded on the value they deliver and not be under too much pressure with the time. Time should be one of those things that you have to do within a certain time, I'm sure, because you have SLAs, you have uh, deadlines, and you have you know clients who are waiting on things. But you shouldn't have to record every single thing you do um, with a time manager software. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to get up and go to the restroom and I have to record that, hey, I, I took a five-minute break. Like, I don't want to do... I, if I had to work in that environment, I would not be happy. So <laughs> I just want to know there's a deadline to meet and I need to deliver this valuable thing, this deliverable by this deadline in high quality, that's it. So I'm not really big on these time management tools that's just, just watching every single thing you do. I have my own, like I did a video where I showed you, I have this cube at home where the cube has different times on it. And I use it to just time myself to make sure I'm moving on to the next task, just for my own personal time management. But I, I would shudder to think, that the organization I'm working for is watching every single mouse click to make sure I'm at my desk. And if I get up to go to the restroom, I have to report to them. Like that would be, that, that would drive me nuts. I couldn't do that. So <laughs> from a you know enterprise level, I don't have a time management tool that I can suggest. All of these two tools I'm talking about are more for your personal time management to make sure you get things done. Clockify and my hours. Okay. Moving on. So ideation sessions. So what are we using for ideation sessions? This is a great, very exciting one to me because I really do, um, I really do like ideation sessions. I like coming up with new ideas. I like, you know, hearing what everybody's thinking. I like having the team just pump out ideas, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Just pumping out ideas and seeing how we we narrow that down to the feature or the functionality we're about to build, right? So it's really exciting. I love it. The two tools I find that's really taking everybody by storm right now is, well, I would say more, more one tool than the other tool, right? There's a ton of ideation session tools out there. There's just a lot. Lucidchart can do ideation sessions. Um, you can just use regular tools like whiteboard, like physical whiteboard. Or you could just be in a virtual meeting and just have your Word document up and take notes or you use your OneNote. Like you don't really have to get stuck on a tool for ideation because you really want to be, you don't want to be restricted by the software. You want ideas to flow without having to worry about clicking here and clicking there. That really interrupts your, 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 your creativity, right? However, there's this tool called Miro. I mentioned this in my last um, software, top software tools video. Mirror board has just been taken off. Like everybody's enjoying using mirror board from a collaborative perspective, working in a team. Mirror has so many uh, templates. There's so many things in there that you could go in and use right out the gate without having to worry about um, creating it yourself. So it's really helpful to get you started quickly. Multiple people can be in there at the same time, editing things together. You can just drop in files from wherever. You can easily search Google from within Mirrorboard. There's just so many great UX features a part of this collaboration whiteboarding tool. It has a very big canvas. So there could be multiple people doing different things in different parts of the tool at the same time. Uh, you can do video in there too. If you want to just jump on you know, video and let everybody see your face and talk about stuff together, chat, laugh, all that stuff. It's amazing. It is one of those great tools and it's been very heavily used these days uh, for ideation sessions and for people to just come together and have a single place to work from. Google Jamboard is another one. The Google Jamboard is more like a whiteboard, a literal whiteboard, and it has very limited functionality. There's no, there's not a lot of, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, templates in there. 
But you can go in there and just write like you would write on a whiteboard. Like it's just literally a whiteboard. <laughs> and the things that you create on it, you can save it as a PDF and you can use it later on. So if you have a pencil or you have some kind of thing to write with, it's very good. Because if you're trying to use your mouse to draw on the whiteboard, it's just really weird. You can create shapes though. You can add some shapes and text and colors. But it's really like just a whiteboard basically it doesn't have a ton of functionality the way mirror board does all right next is project management tools all right so let's talk about project management tools so these are another one that's like everywhere there's so many tools you can really get bogged down in tools right Project management tools, oh my goodness. All right, so, you know, even JIRA could be considered a project management tool because you're managing your software project, but we'll, we'll leave that, we'll leave JIRA for user stories particularly. All right, so project management, we've got Asana. Asana is very popular these days. Monday.com is taken off. So Monday.com came about very recently and it's just been blowing up, people love it. Basecamp has been around for a while, it's another project management tool, and of course, from an enterprise level, Microsoft Project still seems to be the legacy project management tool that people just will not get rid of. Like, they just love it, right? So it's a standard project management tool, but these are other tools coming up that are very, very popular right now. So it's really, uh, it's out there doing things. There's, a, there's so much more than what I'm listing here. There's Rike, there is, there's just so much tools. I don't know, these are the more popular ones, but I've just found that each one I've used is great for something, but not great at everything. And the more they try to do everything is the more they become bad for me. Like Monday starting to do CRM and like, oh no, don't do it, don't do it, stop, stop. Just need project management, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, Asana has great task management, great UX. Um, Basecamp has a lot of things going for it too. Microsoft is just there because people just are used to using it, right? So these are the top tools I think for budget management. Uh, you can take your pick. There's so much more out there. Product management. Now, this is one that excites me. I really love product management um, over project management. So for product management, you're really looking at a tool that can help you create your roadmap. It can help you plan where you're going next with the product. So with the product management, you're managing the lifetime of a product. You're seeing what the features needs to be, where we need to have the feature, when we need to release the feature, what the competitors are doing, um you know what's the prioritization what's the effort that the dev team is telling us for the product etc etc if it's a software product that is and most of these are talking about software so i'll stick to that so for product management we have quite a few tools as well but i would say the top three tools that i have used and i like are air focus so air focus is a product management tool it helps you to see the roadmap and all that so air focus shows you a lot of different views of your product it shows you where the products have dependencies you can see the effort uh, you can put custom fields in there of course uh, you have different views of it in a kanban style board view um, you have lines to show you dependencies we talked about that just now we also have um, just a great layout of your product so you can look at it in at a glance and see where you are you can add colors to mean different things um, it's just really really cool tool great visualization you also have product board so product board is great because it really does help you to see where your product uh is one of the good things i like about product board is that it's easy for you to use it to get feedback from your user so the users can send an email and the email goes to product board and then you can use that email to create what they call an insight which is a way for you to say okay this is a feature we need to add to our product Right, so it, it, the way of getting feedback from your internal staff is very easy. Like if you have a list of enhancement requests, it's not in a different place and you gotta go figure that out. It just, it's an email they send to you and you just tag it in product board and you prioritize it wherever you want. You add your, your, your yeah, maybe you can add points to say, you know, how important this is, if it's a nice to have, if it's a critical feature, if something needs to go out right away and you can um, size it like that. And then when you're ready to, you know, create your stories for it, you can always push it to Jira directly. So it's a great, great tool for getting feedback in. 
also a great tool for letting your, your employers know or your employees, your staff know where these requests are. Also expose what you're coming up with in the future. So in the future, we plan to do this or plan to do that. They can see what's the, what's the direction, what's the roadmap, what are we planning to do with the feature or the product actually. So I, for those reasons, I really like product board. Um, product plan is another one that has some really cool features as well for product managers, help you to see the roadmap, you know, help you to prioritize, you know, and all of these tools do have integration to other tools like, you know, Jira particularly. So you can push from your product straight into the development environment and try to try to get that, that done. So I really like these tools. These are really great tools. Next is user stories and to nobody's surprise, Jira is a tool of choice for managing your agile environment, including your user stories. So user stories are being recorded and documented in Jira. That's the main way that companies are recording their user stories. Um, Jira has so many different features. That's really cool. You can link stories together. You can group them in an epic. You can, you know, create filters to see where stories are. You have a dashboard. Um, there's a great navigation, the way how you can have side panels open up. The way they have really helped you to see details and high level is really good in Jira. You can have your backlog view. You can have your Kanban board, board view. You can do any type of agile in, in Jira, which is, which is also cool. You can create custom fields. You can create statuses to, you know, to make sure you're in the right workflow. Um, you can add, you know, you know, apps to Jira. So for example, if you're doing your designs in Figma or you're doing your designs in uh, Zeppelin, you can add those apps into Jira so that when the designs change, the tickets can be updated automatically. So you can see where the changes are in the design and update your stories. Um, you can link stories based on the dependencies. It's just so much stuff you can do with Jira. It's just really, really cool. Uh, at the end of the day, you can export it to Excel if you want to, you know, do more uh, data manipulation with the data from from uh, from Jira. It's a great tool. No tool is perfect, but I would say Jira really comes close to it. Really good. So that's where we're managing our user stories. But Jira is not the only one in the market. There's also a tool called Rally that manages agile pro uh, process as well. Obviously, it's not as popular as Jira, but it really does have a lot of features in there. There's also another tool called Target Process that is also built for um, managing the Agile workflow. And it's also very similar to what Jira has. And I also reviewed that tool in my last video on the software tools for business analysts. So we'll check that out as well. So tables, right? Tables are just, I mean, I, I call it tables because I didn't want to call it Excel. <laughs> we have become so used to Excel that it, 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 it means its own thing. <laughs> right? It doesn't even mean Excel anymore. It means its own thing. So when I say tables, what I really mean is, um, you know, these tools that help you to see data in you know rows and columns if that makes sense and when you see data in rows and columns you help you can manipulate it in different ways so obviously excel would be one of those tools right so excel is definitely uh one of the number one tools for this but there are other tools as well so there's a smart sheet smart sheet is pretty good if you want to see data in rows and columns and you know you want to add mention people from from you know uh, that are part of the, the, the team. It's just more functionality they built into Smart Sheets, which I think is really cool. There's also Google Sheets. So you could use that if, as an alternative to Excel. So you can have that same formula calculation that you can get from Excel into your tables if you want to work with tables, okay? So it's Google Sheets, it's Smart Sheets, and it's Excel in terms of tools for tables. The other one I want to talk about is your task management tools. So task management, which is really important too, because as you're doing your tool, as you're doing a task, sometimes you want to be able to see all the things that's on your plate. And it's not always easy to see that. Now we do have tasks in Outlook if you want to manage it that way. But for some reason, I find that the Outlook tasks, it just doesn't take off. It's like tasks, Outlook is for email. That's it. <laughs> that's how I have seen it actually. 
I could be wrong, but that's that's how I feel about it. So for task management, I like to use a tool called Todoist. So Todoist is just an easy tool to use, very easy to get started. It's just it just feels easy, right? Um, there's also Microsoft Planner. Microsoft Planner is a part of the 365 suite, Microsoft 365. You just need to go in and search for Planner, and it's a great little tool. It's like a Kanban style board. You can create your tasks. You can assign tasks to your team members. You can cross off tasks as you're finished working with them. It's just really easy to get work done with Planner. I find it to be very much easier than some of the other tools that Microsoft have created. And uh, it's very, very, very good for collaboration. There's also Notion, another tool that's coming up. Um, that's really great for your task management as well. The thing I would say about task managers, task management tools in general is that it's very easy to get overwhelmed very quickly because you can go in there and start creating tasks, creating tasks. And we as business analysts and product people and project people, we can have so much to do that we just list them all out. And after a while, you end up with a beast of a to-do list. Right? <laughs> like, I'll never get any of this stuff done. And that's because you did too much. Try to keep your tasks at what is the most important thing to do today? What are the top three things I have to do by the end of the day? And if I don't do these things, I'm going to be really in trouble. So if you can keep your to-do list at the top three things every day, not to say you're only going to have three things per day, but you might be working towards this top goal, this one thing that you want to get done. Otherwise, you have all these things on your to-do list that you never get to, and it just makes it overwhelming, and everything gets overdue. And then the, these tools are going to send you reminders. It's going to clutter up your email, and it's just a mess, okay? You can easily get overwhelmed with this stuff. So be careful not to put too much stuff in your to-do list and focus. Try to focus. What's the one thing you have to get done today? And then the two things that would be nice to have as well. And work on that way, and you find yourself just getting more done, feeling less frustrated and being more prepared. Okay, so that's my advice there. Okay, presentation tools. So we have a few presentation tools out there that are all very good. Of course, you know, Microsoft PowerPoint, that's like the number one. Yeah, yeah, everybody uses that, it's great. But there's some additional things in PowerPoint that we really can take advantage of. It has, you know, um, some features that's new that's out there, we can look into that. But there's also Google Slides. So Google Slides is coming up for people who want an alternative to PowerPoint. But the one I think is less talked about, which is really, really cool, is Prezi. So Prezi is a presentation software that really helps you to see the big picture and get into the minute details. It's like a zooming effect. So you can kind of zoom into details and zoom out. So you drill down, drill out. It's really cool how you can do that if you if it makes sense, right? If you're presenting to an audience that's really, uh, you know, you want to captivate the audience, Prezi is a great way to present. But if you're presenting to just your team, like in a little small meeting, it's really overkill, right? It's overkill. So just use the tools wisely so you don't you don't overdo it for a small audience or audience that they're just trying to get to the details. They don't really care about you showing big picture and then, you know, they don't care about all that fancy stuff. They just want to see the, the, the raw information. But if you're creating a presentation for a bigger audience, maybe like clients, you know, people who are not very familiar with what you're going to be talking about, I think Prezi is a great way to have a good impression for that. And the tool I'm using right now is Canva. Canva is also good for presentation, so you can check that out as well. Data analytics. So what's the tool for data analytics? So there's a number of tools out there that are coming up for data analytics. It depends on the type of data as well, right? Where is it coming from? Um, from like website, for websites and, you know, software companies, I've found that Google Analytics is pretty good. Uh, but it really just tells you a lot of, you know, what did people do when they came to your website, for example. If you want to know more about your users, you want to understand, you know, their behavior, you want to understand what features are working, you need more than just a analytics tool, data analytics tool like Google. You need something more for understanding your product. So there's product analytics tools and there's like customer success tools and I want to talk about. So from a data analytics, just in general, data analytics that like can take data from any point. We have Google Analytics, we have Tableau, 
and we have uh, Power BI. So Tableau is great, it's very popular. You can pull in data from different sources. You can create these wonderful dashboards. You can create reports. It's a really a great tool for aggregating data and making sense of it. So too is Power BI. These are the two big fishes in the sea right now for data analytics, Power BI and Tableau. And also just to go a little bit beyond just generic data analytics, going to product analytics, the two main tools out there right now for product analytics is a tool called Pendo. So what Pendo does, it actually gets into the, 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 the application that you're trying to analyze and tells you where your users are going, what features they're using, what features are driving the majority of your clicks. You can have dashboards to say what features are most popular and what features are not. You can create guides to help people wherever they're getting stuck. So, okay, you need to click on here, get, you know, go to here, this is how you do it. Um, it's more like a, like a walk me. If you've ever logged into these software tools and seen this pop-up that said, hey, welcome here, you know, click over here, click over there. That's kind of the thing that Pendo does. There's a few other tools out there that does that, such as walk me. Walk me though is more of a training onboarding tool as opposed to product analytics. Um, there's a few others out there as well that really do help to um, get their customers to to understand the software. Some of them, I would just mention off, off the top of my head, Gainsight, Tutango. There's also a slice of data analytics that is like customer success. And I call that, it's its own category really, but customer success is more like where, how can we help you to identify churn and churn for most people who you don't know, churn is a term that we use for when clients decide not to use their software. So it's a very software specific term. Um, so if you, if you've onboarded certain clients and they have maybe a two or three year contracts and the end of the contract, they decide not to renew, that's considered churn. That means that the, you, you didn't please them enough. They weren't happy with your solution. And as soon as the contract is up, they're gone. It costs a company a lot of money to get new customers. So it's really cheaper for them to maintain the one that they have, but everybody wants to keep their customers, right? So churn is a bad thing, obviously. So these software tools are looking at the data, looking at the software and trying to anticipate where the churn will happen, what is the likelihood of this customer to have churn and how can we help you preempt it? Because we're gonna tell you ahead of time. So they're using the data that's coming in from the usage of the software by most of them, they install this snipping code or this tracking code, and they use that to, to kind of track what the users are doing based on the features that you off, offer in your software. And if they see that there's low usage or whatever they use to identify risk, then they will help to, you know, help product teams to understand that, hey, this customer will churn because they don't use the software very much. Your last login date was such and such long, you know, a long time ago. Um, they don't have any good scoring. Like if you give them a, a feedback that says, how likely are you to recommend our software? And they say, <laughs> they give like a one, <laughs> like you're not, you're not getting a high score. Then these are all things that would indicate that this client is probably going to go. So if you know that beforehand and you know, your renewal date is coming up in six months, for example, then that will trigger the customer success team to go work on improving that relationship, right? Like contact that you know, main contact person, talk to them, figure out what the challenges are, try to figure out if you can help them to, to make the better use of it so that you don't end up losing the customer is what it is. So that's a slice of data analytics that's very helpful for product teams and probably project teams as well. All right, guys, so that's what we have today in terms of the top software tools for business analysts, product teams and project teams. I hope you guys found this useful. Please go check out my other videos on my uh, YouTube channel. If you're listening on the podcast, check out my other videos that we talk about other topics to do with business analysis. Also go to Amazon and pick up the book, the business analyst job market report, or you can get it from bajobmarket.com, www.bajobmarket.com. And that gives you the ebook along with a resource kit. So go check that out. Also check out my website, carolise.com. Do the business analyst fit test. It's a free test to figure out if you're a fit for business analysis. Do that. And if you need personalized help to help you grow your career as a business analyst, check out my appointment section. Go check, go click on 
schedule an appointment and come talk to me and see if I could help you to get your career started. Okay, so that's it for, for me today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Take care.